YouTube what's going on. Gonna look at cars. Got a lot of green light, auto world. Got a Johnny Lightning, got a mini GT, and then I got some vintage truck that I found out and about. And I was kind of around town um, a few weeks ago, and I found something at a vintage store. Finally found something cool. So take a look at that, too. A lot of exciting things for 2022. A lot of cars. Uh, I was lucky enough to find the Lincoln Mark V, so we're going to look at that, too. Really cool thing. And I'll finally get it on camera, the RX-7, the little Mazda. So we'll look at that, too. Let's start out with some green light. We're going to do some green light. We'll take a look at this. This is an old casting. It's been out for a minute. But it's been re-released. I haven't had it by itself. I had it with the pickup truck and the flatbed set. But that's a green machine I found. So I didn't take that out. But this we will take out. The famous 76 Torino Campbell Soup Can car. Starsky and Hutch. Look at that thing. So, they're Torino and they're Ranchero. It's a hard body style to copy in general. Cars vary. It's a lot of parts. And <laughs> a lot of curves to this vehicle from the mid-70s. This Torino mid-70 car, I think a uh, slight refresh after the 72 car. It's a little bit more uh, interesting looking than this one. They kind of toned down the styling. Just like all the other ones, because they're kind of based off the same pattern in terms of the scale. So 143rd, 24 scale, and the 118 scale car. Kind of similar to this body. Got a lot of thick detail on the front, so doesn't quite look very good. I would probably do, take the headlights off, sand them down, get them to fit a little bit flusher. Same thing with the grill. Take a lot of work, but it would look a lot better. The other thing too, they use the same size wheel and tire. It's kind of hard to make two different sizes and still do the same production. So I get it. But probably with the wheel swap, this would look pretty good. Jack up the rear end and put the fatter tires on. The rest of the body's great. I think from this angle and the rear panel, we're doing okay. Separate tail light. This car would have had like a small black Ford in it, really. I had a 400, a 351, 302, inline 6. I can't remember if they went past 351 to 400. And then uh, big box, I don't know. After that on the Ford, you can comment below. Three-speed automatic car. And uh, take a, get the little light there. And a little beacon light. It's a funny car. And there's opening hood. It's thick enough where we can get it open. Hood alignment's bad. You see the Ford engine with the air cleaner. So I'm glad to have it in scale. It's not perfect. I'll probably jack around with it. Uh, the body's decent enough. If I clean up the front end and get the back sitting better, I think it would be a pretty good car. Definitely won't have to paint one. It's already done, so... There we go. Black interior too, so that's all correct. Starsky and Hutch. Recent Hollywood series. I'll list it below. All my videos will have basically the cars that we're looking at, like how you can search for them. In the search bar, if you're looking to get one, you know, through eBay or whatever you use. So I try to do that below if you don't see on the package. And they've done the taxi cab, he's done his pickup truck, they did the Ranchero, they did, they're did. they going to re-release an Econoline van. So these are all vehicles that made appearances in the TV show. So, good stuff. Probably make like a, if you get enough of them, you could probably do like an action scene, have the cars all parked together. We're going to get some more common stuff, so, pretty popular thing, we're on series 12. We're going to do all-terrain. Let's look at... Uh, Let's see, which one we want to see first? I thought this was really cool. Is this a 91 Chevrolet S10 Baja? <laughs> so these trucks are out for a little bit. Um, kind of like the ZR2 Colorado's now with the jacked up suspension, off-road tires, some accessories like, you know, like the roll bar in the bed. Things like that, fenders. It's kind of like the granddaddy of them. This vehicle was out. <clears throat> they had something like this. A lot of these sport trucks were getting gussy it up make a little extra profit put some accessories on these vehicles make limited edition runs GM still does it but not too much today 
I think it kind of died out in the early 2000s. You know, Monte Carlo SS, the Dale Earnhardt edition, those type of cars. Kind of like this package. Throw some rims and tires on it. Kind of make it look unique that way. Put mm -hmm. special paint graphics on. And you have yourself a, a limited vehicle. Using their um, highly optioned rims. So it's like these solid alloys. This is a not uh, vintage ad. They could have made a vintage ad with this. Probably will. I think this came in red as well, not just white. They're using the same ride height as the other two trucks. Uh, I got, got the old blue one here. So the chassis doesn't change. This one does have the engraved serial numbers. I like those a lot better. So I got it below a thousand anyway. Yeah, so I would have this package, put the tire back there, making, you know, the bed completely useless, basically. <laughs> Extended cab. I believe these came regular cab, too, but I can't remember. 4.3 V6 at this time. Four-speed automatic transmission. Uh, transfer case. Independent front suspension on these vehicles. Weren't solid axle. Leaf sprung in the back. Torsion bar, I think, front was sort of the style. can't remember. Springs and torsion bar. Look at the... Uh, little pre-runner bull bar those fog lights as we i just noticed this they're laying back so they're they're doing they're doing a lot of work there probably get those cleaned up a 4.3 fuel injection hood doesn't open remember they do these type of hoods just like on their square bodies so they can make the hoods for the uh monster trucks they have the holes here for the blower and everything so it's easier to just to pop the hood out than change the whole casting so they can recycle everything see the graphics here i mean it's clean they always have good tampo process it's just the wheels and tires haven't altered this truck yet i'm probably going to lift it slightly uh, take the tires off the rims clean off the flashing on the tires that kind of stuff um, maybe take my paintbrush take the window out and go in there and clean all that you know if I painted that all black in there it'd look a lot better it's almost want to take the accessories off and sand them a lot of flashing on them that's a separate piece so <laughs> I have to put the tire on then they got to put this thing on glue it to that and then they glue this into the bed so there's a lot of assembly on this vehicle uh, on an assembly line so for the price point the quality is it's, it's a it's a tough balancing act, but they do the two bumper. And that was the benefit of having separately molded bumpers. They knew accessories could get changed, just like the XJs we're going to look at. Got a couple XJs, Cherokees, so we'll see those. So, yeah, this thing needs to clean up, but not too bad. Not too bad. Bucket seat console interior. Got the Chevrolet brow. <laughs> uh, brings back a lot of memories these trucks you'd see them a lot actually believe it or not probably be one or two in every town you know before they rusted away it was popular just like the zr2 colorado is today you probably see a lot of those on the road too so chevy baja now let's look at something else all terrain and this is pretty much all this whole series they're all pretty good i mean most of the trucks they didn't want the nissan titan look well, here what is that bronco cherokee so basically, the Tahoe, I really didn't, yeah, it's not a big deal. I don't like the Tahoe, but I don't like the rims on it. But this was cool. So let's look at this. Um, and Because <laughs> we haven't seen this yet. Where is it? Uh, very stock-looking truck. Extremely stock-looking. Put these down here so they're not in the way. All right. <clears throat> look at this. Got a little kitty hair on there. So let's take a look at this thing. These are really good. They're using the smaller gauge tires, even though they're the off road style. So we talked about that last time. They do really well in these, the scale vehicle. They're a little wide still. The width doesn't change, it's just the, the profile of the tire, the aspect ratio, whatever you want to call it. So at the separate grill so we can update that to basically 96 because 97 is when this front bar changed and that's when they went to the different body 
See, in this case, they weren't able to cast this as a separate piece like they do on the Ford um, wagons, like the Country Squires. Uh, they actually had to change the whole buy. There were slight differences. Doors are kind of much the same, but this profile back here is all round. So they're almost forced to make two different ones. But they did. They invested the money in two different toolings. The rest of it can basically be made up by just changing your wheels out and then opting to paint the fenders in the lower trim here uh, or not, or painting it body color. So in the mid-80s, this car is a 86. They had the chrome still on the front grill but this grill basically went to 96 with with updates in terms of those bars here and then going from chrome to like black plastic or painted bumper profiles are saying it's changed the plastics so it went from chrome to being painted again they don't do the lower air dam that was on these cars so it had a had an air dam over there uh v6 i think we looked at this but maybe not <laughs> i can't remember v6 2.8 liter and then we got this other one we'll skip a series real quick i found this <laughs> look at this <laughs> this is an 88 limited so this is when those limiteds came out they had the wagoneer and then they had this thing and that had the dark gold painted rims knew a lot of these they had these are the the um like the mesh style alloys uh, i think the earlier trucks had the kind of the painted rim though like this and then it went to the mesh mm -hmm. style so leather uh, air conditioning better radio that kind of stuff came on the limited and of course the painted trim Yeah, I like this one a lot, the dark gray. Show not so much, but the gray is really pretty on this. This is an exceptional one to find. It's got the good limited trim, you can see there, above Cherokee. So, especially if you brought up during this time frame, this brings back a lot of memories seeing these vehicles. So, And it, this one rolls better than the Pioneer. Their wheels, they have the barbs on them on the axles, and uh, a lot of times the... You can see on this wheel here, it's cracked in there, just because it kind of gets they get slammed on there. But I, I'll pull these off and find a different axle, and we'll we'll be back in business because backspacing's good and all that. So I like the way it looks. There again, they paint the grill, not the best, uh, but this is that magnification. If you look at it with your just your naked eye it's not <laughs> it doesn't look as bad trust me on that clear windows no fogging so now majority of the cars are coming it seems like with less fogging so hopefully we're getting past that issue so yeah jerky and this would have had an inline six in it at this point 88 that's the newer Hollywood series. I list up below. All right, so I got those two Cherokees that way. If I looked at the red one last time, I'm sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> now look at this thing. So another Gladiator. This is the one I was talking about last time when we talked about this old girl. So then we got this one, and this is again series twelve. There's just their call out right there. Same background. There's your skew. All right, Put this down there. So this one. I wanted to see, wanted to get my hands on it. Didn't know exactly how it would be. Um, it's good and bad. I do like the body and all the accessories. That's cool. It's got the hood extractor hood on it. You can see the difference. I was talking about that last time. And you can swap this. This is riveted onto the main body. And let's do the old swap a -roo. So they'll be able to do the different models. Hopefully they'll make the V8 one. Again, look, here we go. <laughs> this came off again. I didn't put much pressure to it. Probably run it like that anyway. Here we go. I mean, it looks good either way, actually. Um, they they need more offset, so these need to, the wheels and tires need to come out more. And hopefully that'll be done. But I just wanted to show everyone how it came out of the package. I found this recently. So, I haven't really had the time to fool with it, but it's cool. It rolls decent. 
But the, I don't know about these wheels and tires. I might put something a little bit fatter on, a little bit less tall. Uh, I do like it. It's got the good accessories. 1941 edition. It's kind of like a Rubicon, I guess. It's a nice truck. It's got the good front bumper, too. I like that bumper better. But here's a stock one. So, again, it's just screaming for a little bit different offset. So, there's a Jeep. We've kind of looked at the Gladiator, talked about it. So, leave your own devices on that. Because oh, we've got some cool ones. This is the new four door Bronco. Now, I got a lot to say about this thing. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Hopefully Mini GT or someone like that creates this Bronco in this scale. Uh, this is crazy. I think the Bronco Sport, which I haven't bought yet, um, is better. It, they do the fat tires. It, they've done everything pretty good, except this the way this sits on there is not all the way down. So it's not flush. Let's take a look here. It did come in the color I like, though, that bluish color it's cool you can see look at that that thing got slammed under there so that piece of plastic this this window channel or whatever it is needs to be pushed in there so i i got really got to take this thing apart it's got very cloudy window you can see the bronco way it is because you can take your doors off as they make the which was smart jeep doesn't done that yet just make its own perch for the mirror so you don't take your mirrors off when you take your door off it's got the separate sandwiched material for the fenders between the body and the chassis and it's got a lot of room for different accessories this one has the winch bumper you can see it it's get sandwiched in there they paint the this piece onto the body so that's metal so independent front suspension solid axle uh, you know live axle rear Four cylinder turbo or six cylinder and six cylinder turbo because uh, they have the new Raptor now version, which is super wide. Separate taillights, those kind of need to come off too because they don't seem to be in set correctly, they're not completely even, they're good. And you can see the big gap there in the top, so I got to get this thing apart, it's, it's all over the place. Body's good. I mean, there's not inaccuracies in terms of like how small the window relationship is or any of that. The grill looks good. We just have to clean up the the tires, basically, and things like that. Typical green light stuff. It rolls decent. I feel like it sits a little low. I know the stock ride, even with the bad lands and the wild track or whatever it is, packages, um, they come kind of low but they're not that low so we'll have to probably change that a little bit it looks pretty good though i'd say yeah all right let's see all right sir we're going back in the parking lot let's take a look at uh oh did we finish everything Let's, let's do one car here. I don't know if we looked at this, but I'm going to look at it right now. This is the RX-7 Import Heat Series. Uh, on the box, but I'll list the, the stuff below. This comes in two-part A and B version. There's a white and a blue. I haven't been able to find the white. This one comes with a, a Nissan. <laughs> Where is that thing? There it is. This old girl, this is an old casting of Johnny Lightning. I'm thinking uh, late 90s, early 2000s, yeah, 99. So this is when they were still kind of building goofy stuff. Or scale, you know, the Hot Wheels matchbox scale, not true scale. Now they're going to make a one uh, after this, Dotson. So this is the last, it was like a 280, right? Something like that. So they're going to do uh, the generation after this one. The um, early 80s one or late mid 80s when it kind of changed to that one before the 300 ZX. So they're going to do a casting similar to this. So I'm excited about that. But really not too much to talk about in the early playing Mantis Johnny Lightning version. No opening features. 
I don't know. It looks like almost like a zinger back here, how big that wheel well is. I almost feel like we should just go with it and put some uh, put some drag slicks back there and stuff. Fix the, <laughs> the... All of them, they have the interior tub sticking up under there. So a lot of issues with this. Looks kind of good okay like that. Believe it or not, the Matchbox one of this is pretty good. And I would say better. Even though it's not as detailed in terms of the painting. Back end, you got those little tail lights that everybody loves. Indiana plates. So this would be an inline six car. They went to a turbo. They offered turbo. I don't remember if it was on this platform, the second gen one. But yeah, they play with that kind of stuff too. It's kind of funny. All right, we looked at that long enough. That's kind of crazy looking. This is the real stealer of the show. They're also going to be doing the square body ranger soon too. So a lot to look forward to from Johnny Lightning. Um, and this has, we'll have to kind of slam on it, backwards hood like the Corvette and things like that. Your little rotary uh, Wankel engine. So we have a, a rotary engine and a very novel concept. A lot of manufacturers kind of experimented with them. But Mazda was one of the ones to really put it into production a while, you know, in a wide range of vehicles. Sports car, but they also had a pickup and a sedan and all sorts of stuff with this setup. It's quite an interesting engine. The piston is a big triangle, basically. A rotary, and it'll spin in like a concentric circle, getting fired upon at an angle. And it kind of spins the, the disc, basically. You can look that up, though. It's beautiful casting. They're using the Johnny Lightning-style two-piece wheels. So they have the high-speed axle, and then they'll sandwich the hubcap and the, the wheel that's actually part of the axle assembly between the tire. They've done it really exceptionally well. It's probably the best setup. You know, there's a Kyosho that does that kind of, too. Atomic Limited Vintage is sort of like that setup. But... We have it here in a, a you know a regular down to earth price, and so the scale on this car is really good. The engraving is very good. This is the first run casting that was seen released. This and the white one. So trying to find the white one. It's just a really great vehicle. Perfect scale. You put this next to Cadillac, for instance, and it just is tiny. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Really like this car. Really tiny horsepower, ninety to one hundred something horses, things like that. Constant improvement, and they made that work of art car. The you know the mid nineties RX seven. What a great, beautiful car that was, and very popular even to this day, especially with drift racing light vehicle. And they take V eight swaps very well, so your power to weight ratio even climbs even higher than what it was designed for originally. So. Awesome car. Love it. Even the wheels are perfect. They didn't have to borrow wheels from any different source. It might make it easier for them to cast these wheels because it is two-piece. So, um, you know, they just have to concern themselves instead of constructing the wheel. That always stays the same. And then this piece can just be cast like a, a part on the car. So they maybe are more free to design it. Look how skinny that is. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's fun. It's actually fun to play with. You take it off, it almost looks like you're taking the wheels and tires off for real. But you just kind of have to roll the, the soft rubber over everything, and it, it makes it. But I might have to take a minute here off camera to do that. But here we go. Pretty cool. All right. We'll let her be there with a the tire on the side. That's okay. <laughs> We're going to look at Auto World, and then we're going to get right to that Mini GT, and then we're going to look at some old stuff. Well, one piece of old truck, anyway. Another series for my American Highway Legends stuff. Let's look at this. Uh, I got the Jeep. I did break down just for, just for saying I have one. I also got the black. I don't know if we looked at the black, but here's the fluorescent one. So... I did get the ones with the fat tires. They don't roll because they didn't lifted it enough to clear the fenders in the back, as you can see. So not the best roller. I can change that. Might not do anything, though, either. 
It's not my favorite Jeep casting, but they're nice in their way. So highlighter yellow, no accessories. And then we have this one that's loaded with crap, and it's got the Silverado truck wheels on it. This one's got the roof rack and stuff. I think it would look good lifted and, and some crack wheels and tires, so we'll probably address that soon but here's the highlighter one and here is the package hyper green and the vehicle so pretty much one of the last releases for 2021 but we did find a couple of 2022 cars even though they're saying this is the last release for 21 really these only were available basically now and I found this first, so we'll take a look at this old girl. The Nova Wagon in, in what is this, Ermine White. So it's more of a softer white. Beautiful car. They do the inline six, the red interior. Just gorgeous. I think it looks really well with the brown and the, and the blue one that we got last time. Kind of cool looking. Look at that thing. Just awesome. Yeah. Let's take a look at this. A little inline six. You know, it would've been nice with a small block V8, but look at that bread and butter inline six. You can get an automatic transmission. You can get a stick shift. You can do column shift or floor shift. Beautiful front end. Still, they're doing a. 63 car. Mm -hmm. I think you can go a couple of years with that front end, but not long, not too long. Of course, the roof line in this part shared with other General Motors divisions mm -hmm. like Buick and Olds. Yeah, I like this car. Nice crisp white walls. Does roll good. Again, they didn't put the post through the back. They got a short little riser under the floor there to kind of secure the rivet so I don't know why they have done it in some other cars like the Suburban I thought that was interesting but yeah what a beauty alright look at that now a really special special car I couldn't believe I found it without being scalped this car is basically almost sold out online 77 Mark V look at this thing so cool so it's definitely a highlight of my collection I like these big cars they're awesome this is release three. They're really there. Or no. Yeah. Like six, release four, sorry. I'm looking at that. There we go. Yeah. I think that the... You know, they haven't released the, the set B yet, the black ones. Kind of they're doing a stage of these. Haven't seen those yet. Not even available online. So the black one's coming next. Car doesn't have the soft top, steel roof car. I think I like this better than my Neo, even though the Neo is pretty sweet. We'll put it over here just to take a look. We looked at this last time. Now, there's a lot of detail on this car, but look at how small that window is compared to this one. So I think that looks better. And we can see the Lincoln insignia perfectly. This one's a little gluey. It's got some glue. A little bit flatter on the windows. So, windows down on this looks pretty good. Of course, we can't have the hood ornament. That would have been impossible on a this price point. Also, you had to mold all that together where in the real cart floats through the bumper. And that's that's how they are. They did kind of do on the bottom, though. You see how it peeks out? Look at that flashing, though. <laughs> Big old goober right there. So, that didn't make it through the press. Or the mold. But the rest of the car is great. Huge engine, 460 Ford big block, C4 automatic, I believe, or C6 automatic. One of those. Pretty beefy car. We'd see a lot of these around because they made a lot of them. The uh, car was produced in the hundreds of thousands. One of the top selling vehicles in the 70s was this car here. Expensive car, but extremely popular. It was also platform was shared with the Thunderbird. So we had the Thunderbird on this platform. And this Mark V, uh, Mark IV, same way. They kind of mm -hmm. wanted to share costs because it used to be kind of its own model with its own unique stuff, but um, was untenable. 
I think it sold more than the Caddy. Of course, the competition was the Cadillac. Cadillac had a couple of coupes. I think Lincoln might have two. But uh, Caddy also had Aldorado and Coupe de Ville and all these other cars. So they had a lot of two doors. Mm. Ford, not so much. They had a few. But this bad boy was a big seller. And uh, they didn't mess with it too much. And you can put a lot of people in this thing. <laughs> this actually represents the car too. Same color as that recent Top Gear episode where they went took this car down to Europe. They had this car in a Cadillac and uh can't remember the other one, but yeah. So that's kind of hilarious to drive these cars around on those small roads. One of the largest production cars ever. So pretty neat. X frame on the bottom, look at that. Uh four length rear suspension. I think they overdid the size of that pumpkin. It looks a little ridiculous that big, but so that's kind of funny. It's kind of like they exaggerated that. Tailpipe goes all the way through. See how it just clips on the back there? So that's kind of neat. And we have the, all the badging where it needs to be. It's got soft um, pinstriping too. You can see there on the car. So there's detail there. So they did a really good job. Uh, rolls very nicely too. They used the truck tires, which was smart. So that's one of their best tires. So they created a wheel to fit that profile, that tire, and I think it works great. I didn't do any touch up to the wheels. You got the Lincoln insignia on the center cap, and the edge of the wheel is really good. Got a good dish to it, so I'm happy. A little bit of a slight wobble, but it's hard for them to really paint those white lines on those tires straight all the time i don't know why i don't know if the jig kind of squeezes it in one direction or whatever we're getting better it's not as bad as it used to be but uh, a beautiful casting i'm going to get all of them of course they're going to be highly sought after seem like unlike the cadillacs cadillacs would sit around these these uh, have been you know since a few few packs that have been put out they've been gone so i was very very happy to find this i mean it's almost like hitting gold. <laughs> it's almost like finding gold on the ground. Well, before we get to the Mini GT, which is a really cool car, let's take a look at this old old beast. This thing weighs probably 100 pounds, it feels like. So I didn't even know this series existed until I ran across like four of the series in the, in one spot in the, in the antique store. And uh, it was awesome. I wish they would make that, but there's really no Bison 164 scale truck out there but there is this so when dixie had this set going probably late 80s 90s where they'd have the trucks i guess and i looked these up they're relatively inexpensive to find this one's the hardest so the ford truck and it's supposed to be replicating this vehicle it's very close but it's a little bit of a different model year different series and there's your this is number seven this thing is old beast this thing Solid metal. Solid metal. This is a bad boy. So it's got the vintage dry van box on it. That's cool. This is solid, solid metal. <laughs> There's screws from the top or post or something, how they snap it in. I think it's just kind of... But this thing's got to weigh three pounds by itself. It's crazy. Nice, soft rubber tires. This thing is held up pretty good. I think the copyright on this thing when i looked at it uh had to i think it was like 90 or something like that so something in 94 92 88 something there so this and winross is really the only one that's doing this Ertl did them but they're kind of more like toys these were collectibles but they were built like an Ertl. so look at the tractor it's got really beautiful polished axles, painted bases. Uh, yeah, here we go, 93, but that's the casting. So, and it's got really soft rubber tires that hold up over and over and after all the years being around in the box. Non articulating fifth wheel, it's cast. And then there's our trailer. So, I've been wanting this generation Ford truck ever since we looked at the other one. These go for the most part the most. And they also have a C series tilt cab Ford cab over. 
uh, that's even rarer than this one, this set up here. So definitely happy to have it. I love the color scheme, very simple. Because they do make a lot of, you know, kind of period graphics on these trucks. And uh, they don't look as good as the ones that are more plain. So very excited to find this. Um, and it's 164 scale. And it's vintage. And it's a it's an old tractor. So I love them. Look at that front end. Separate tail or headlight detail. So just a beautiful truck. Rolls gorgeously because of the soft rubber. Really no flashing to speak of. So rolls nice and straight. Very happy to have this. Wind Dixie series. Probably try to get the Ford Cab over. If I can find it. Let's see if I can put a place back here for it. Yeah. <laughs> I recover the garage for a minute. And the last one, the old Resistance. Look at this thing. Mini GT, Miho exclusive. Miho really just imported this thing. This thing was already sold in the box overseas. Of course, we saw that on, on um, eBay. They're about a couple months ago. Look at that. So... Gran Turismo. It's basically a 2015 model year car. One one produced. It was kind of like a, a concept car. Has a theoretical top speed around 278 miles an hour. It's a quad turbocharged 8 liter W16 engine. So based off that Volkswagen um, kind of uh, motor that they developed a while ago. This car was assembled in France. Based off the Bugatti Chiron, if I'm saying that correctly, body but over an LMP1 chassis. So basically the fastest closed body cars below Formula 1 cars. So that kind of level of performance. But it has that drivetrain, so that big 8 liters in it. 7-speed dual clutch with all-wheel drive for stability. And it has the the center kind of um, wing here like the LMP cars have for st you know straight line stability, things like that. Mini GT is a master of doing a price point, but also having extreme level of detail. They do this by merging plastic and die cast parts. So they do die cast where it's necessary and makes the model feel more premium. But in parts where these cars have a lot of detail, like in our front air air situation here, <laughs> you know, all the front spoilers and splitters, and the rear detail there, that is done in much better detail with plastic so we have metal here where basically light blue is painted and the rest of the stuff's all assembled with plastic and look how thin we can get the profile of the wear wing for instance the graphics of the uh, carbon fiber the blue carbon fiber that looks really good the Bugatti symbol for the fuel fillers the you know, air extractors you can see the double wall so they do really really well and we've seen this with their Lamborghini they did misplace the exhaust ports so the exhaust pipes there a little crooked probably can be fixed there's the Bugatti but badge right there it looks really nice so I, I just thought the car was awesome look at the sharp detail there in the back of the ring right there so I've been looking at this car for a long time. I believe these are camera rear view mirrors. Pretty sure about that. And one single seater in the middle, I supposedly. I haven't really been able to take a look at that. That's what I've read. The headlights are separate piece, so that looks really good. They got the 16 on the front. Color scheme of the old Grand Prix car back in the olden days was this blue. So just a tremendous car. Even the windshield it's got those little markings on the stickers there the beautiful how they painted the windshield wiper even though it's cast it looks really good and it's sharp I mean you run your fingers on this stuff you probably open your mail with it extremely good rolling car too no issues there so I like that clearance on the wheels is tight but they don't rub slicks and metal base with exposed screws so you can actually take it apart i haven't done that yet it's probably another it's pro, this car is probably while it's still available worth getting one carded and it's that special so hopefully they do more iterations of this car maybe in different colors it would be kind of neat so really cool that they got the licensing getting this car basically 20 dollars to your door it's not bad it will go up from there so 
Get them how you can. I might even get a Chinese uh, release one. So. You don't have to just have all the packaging. Just have it in that sealed box. So that's what we looked at today. Mm -hmm. Saw some vehicles. Especially this beautiful Bugatti. And Lincoln. They happen to be blue. And uh, yeah. So more to come. I got big cars we should look at really too. So hopefully I can get those on film soon. I gotta clear the desk off of course. We can't have this the wrong background there. So we'll get to that shortly. And uh, more little cars coming. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Hope everybody's been doing well. Thanks for all the new subscriptions and the thumbs up and the comments. I do appreciate it. Till next time.